Hello, this is Radish Head, and welcome to a new, what could become a series. I don't know. Depends on how the uh, how this game works out. But um, basically, I've got a game, Dev Tycoon. That's right. I am playing a game called Game Dev Tycoon, which is basically a simulator kind of game where you kind of make video games, and then they sell and they get reviewed. And it's all very exciting. So I don't, I don't know how exactly um, how long I'm going to be making these videos for but uh, if you guys enjoy watching them then just say so and then I'll make more because that's just how it works and of course I've noticed how much people love the customization sort of audience interaction bit of my Pokemon Emerald videos so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of name my games after suggestions that you come up with in the comments so if there's like a fantasy RPG that you want me to make just say say it and then I'll, I'll I might do it so uh, yeah I hope that works out so let me see company name I'm going to be well, we start off in our basement so I'm gonna be basement gaming and then I'm gonna be radish head now I have played the uh, this game basically takes place over 30 years of console history so you sort of start with the Commodore 64 and work all the way up to the release of the PlayStation 4. And uh, so yeah, I have done that, but my I've got a challenge. My challenge is to get just one game with a perfect rating. Because once you make a game, <clears throat> they get reviewed by four different reviewers. Score 1 to 10. And I have never ever managed to get a perfect game that scores 10 from every reviewer. I don't even know if it's possible, but I've heard people complaining on the internet that it just can't be done. But I am going to do it, this, that's the challenge. So we're going to make a perfect game, and if you comment with like a suggestion of a game, then it could be yours. So uh, here we go. Hopefully the, uh, the lag isn't going to be too bad. I apologise if the lag is a little bit terrible, because I know that later on um, it does sort of slow down a little bit because there's so much stuff going on. Uh, you'll see in a minute. Anyway, right, so we need to make our first game. Oh, that's a bit of a tutorial. I know, I know all this anyway. So, um, okay, so we've got to make our game. I'll name it after I've chosen. So I guess our, we've, we're sort of going to be working on a really early console, so I'm going to do a medieval... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. A medieval adventure game on the Commodore 60 or the G64 they they've all got parody names of their real life counterparts you see so um, let me see what's our medieval adventure going to be I'm going to call it uh, ghouls and ghosts there we go okay <clears throat> sorry about that right then uh, we're gonna have it's gonna be a text-based adventure I think yep here we go Right, so we need to uh, to make a medieval adventure. So I think the uh, gameplay's got to be well up there. I'm not sure if the engine does. I, the quests are probably quite important. I put that about halfway. Okay, that's good. So you can see these bubbles are pop bubbling up. Um, there you go. Um, so basically, game points are designed divided into design and tech, the more points you generate the better the game will be. From time to time there'll be bug coins, yeah. So yeah, you can see we're sort of he's he's making his game. Um medieval adventure, right, so I think level design. Um AI is a bit Yeah that looks good. Okay. Let's make ghouls and ghosts from our basement. It's um not very sophisticated right now, but we'll we'll get better. Um, okay. So uh, we've got basic sounds. Of course, the world's design is going to be important for an adventure game. And I think the other two are probably about right. I'm making a few bugs. We'll have to fix those before we release it. Here we go. Oh, yes, yeah, so he's going to tell us now. So yeah, your ratings will go down if you don't fix the bugs. And since we're aiming for a 10 one day, we're going to have to fix all those bugs. 
And that's all of them. Okay. Tournament is now finished. So we're going to get some experience points. New topic, new combo, great combo. So they do appreciate the um, sort of combos that work well together. The game we hand off to publishing. Should see reviews and sales coming soon. Okay, we've got some research points. So before we get the reviews in, let's research something. Um, once we get to 50 research points, we can make our own game engine, so maybe I'll wait for that. Well, here we go, the first reviews. So, how is our first ever game doing? Five fun of stages. A six shows potential. A six, quirky, but good. And a uh, six, medieval and adventure is a great combination. So sometimes they give you little pieces of information like that that make that you just know that you're doing something right. Oh, some news! Basement Gaming, a newcomer in the game industry, has just released their first game, Ghouls and Ghosts. The game had a moderate response from reviewers who are curious what Basement Gaming will deliver in the future. Okay, so you can see the sales coming up on the right hand side here. We sold about 2.8k in our first week, which is not bad for like a little basement company, honestly. We've also got 10 fans. That number will definitely increase in the future. But um, yeah, wow, look at this, we're gonna hit 10k possibly. But let's not spend too much time looking at that, we need to make a new one. So I think we should move into a sports... No, no, not really. Hmm. Maybe a military... Military action. I don't know if that will really work on the on these early consoles, though. Let's try it anyway. Military action on the G64. We're going to call it... Call to Honor. Let's say, yeah. Uh, a parody name of various action games, but the military actions. Okay, so military action, we need the engine. We don't need the story or quests, that's not important. We want it to play well and look great. As well as it can do in the year 1980. <laughs> or whatever year this is set. Dialogues and no. AI, yes. This is gonna be a great looking game. As you get to uh, later stages in the game, you get more customization. You'll see, it's a it's a great game. You'll love it. World design, um, not that important, but not uh, not terribly unimportant either. Okay, here we go. We're making our game. Graphics, sound, and it's finished. Let's clear out the bugs. Schools and ghosts is, is almost off the market. Three, two. One there. Oh, he added a bug in in the last second. Ghouls and Ghosts sold 9.7k, generating about 17k in sales. So now we've got plenty of cash, which is nice. Oh, they this worked out quite well. Okay, we haven't quite got enough research points to um, make our own engine yet. So let's do one more game. This one is going to be a space. A space RPG on the PC. We're gonna call it um, Adventures. Nah, is that. Mm. Let's call it Star Fight. Star Fight with 2D graphics. It's gonna be high tech stuff. Oh, cool to honor, here we go. Six, I like it. He likes it, the Star Games. Six, could have been more. Six, military and action is a great combination. And a five has its moments by all games. Okay, so I think that's our most successful. Okay, right. Space RPG, gotta bring up the stories and quests. Engine, not so important. Now you see, by adjusting these sliders, we can change the amount of time that is spent on each of the um, the things. 
Anyway, meet recent market studies suggest that the Govador 64 is steadily outselling capacities in the PC. Hmm, that's not very good for us, because we're making a PC game right now. But, uh, I think we are anyway. Call to Honor was definitely on the PC. Anyway, dialogues, yes, that's important. AI, not quite so important. Okay. Hi there, I've just finished Call to Honor, impressed by your talent. In the, I'm in the contracting business, we could use skills like yours. So basically, we can contact this guy and um, he will have mini challenges for us um, that can help us get research points and extra cash. So that's nice. Cool to honor has achieved a company sales record. Okay, world well, design, that's pretty important. Graphics, not quite as important. And we got 64 we got, we've got enough research points to make our own engine after this. And that can help us make better games, of course. It does cost a lot of money though, I've, I've gone bankrupt before uh, making an engine that's far too expensive. Apparently space RPG isn't a great combo, so I'm not expecting fantastic scores on this one. But hey, you've got to experiment, right? Oh, apparently the Japanese company, Ninvento, is planning to launch its very own home gaming console. Ninvento is known for the widely successful arcade game, Dinky King. If you don't get the parody there, then just, I don't even want to talk to you. Uh, many experts are doubting the home gaming consoles will take off. Little do they know, silly analysts, they don't understand. Oh, Starfight reviews, that's not looking good. Not much fun. I think a space RPG would be quite good. Is that basically what Mass Effect is? Bin material? Pretty bad. Oh, don't be a one. Oh, utterly uninspiring by all games. That's a horrible set of views. I'm expecting that game to, uh, to bomb. But uh, we might lose some fans as well. But um, before we look at that, let's make our own game engine. Yeah, look at that, we're losing fans, so minus 5 for that one. Minus 5 again, so it's not an absolute disaster, but, you know, if we want to uh, achieve a perfect game, then we've got to step up our game. Literally. <laughs> we have successfully researched a custom game engine, okay. We may as well also research um, a new topic while we're at it. Let's research a racing, because I like racing, making racing games, they're quite fun. Well, Starfight continues to bomb in the sales. But we do have 85 cash, 85k. Oh no, now we don't. Still more. Oh yes, the Ninvento. They have announced plans to release their Tez console, which features cartridge-based games and a uniquely designed controller. I wonder how that would do. But uh, no time to worry about that. We have to create our custom engine. So here we go. Um, it's going to have 2D graphics, mono sound, a story, and save game. Because it's going to call. Oh, we can't afford it. Oh, we can't afford all this rubbish. Uh, well, that's no good. We need to, bu 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 we need to build another game to uh, fund our engine. So we may as well make use of the engine. Racing... not racing strategy, racing sim. That'd be great. Racing sim on the G64. We're going to call it... Formula 2. Formula 2. Okay. I'm not sure what a racing sim racing sims will presumably need lots of engine, not much story and quests. Because I think sims are supposed to be quite realistic. Okay, dialogues no, and those AI definitely for a simulator. I mean, I'm not sure how developed the AI could possibly be at this stage of the technology timeline, but um, let's get the graphics up there. All of those are important for a sim. Oh, 
of course I'm just guessing here, but I, I feel like I know what these what these games need. Carolyn Richards on the local news. Yeah, I'll give her an interview. Great, thanks for your time. Well, okay. <laughs> I didn't answer any questions. Oh, here we go. Basement Gaming is trying to make it big in the gaming industry. The company has already published three games and is working hard on their next. In the interview, Radish had said the next game is going to be Racing Sim. Well, best luck to Basement Gaming. One of the great games not the only recipe for success. It's, it's, it's essential to build hype. Hype is most Yes, basically, we can create. Um, later on, we can do marketing to increase hype, we can go to the uh, the E3 convention, which is called G3 in this game, um, but our hype is a little bit higher for this game, because there was a news report generated about it. Also, we're breaking records here, I have a feeling this is going to be a good game, but you know what? We're going to find out how this game did in the next episode, thanks so much for watching, and uh, don't forget to voice your opinions on the series in the comments section. I hope you enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you next time.